Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, give us the opportunity to improve upon the designs of nature by manipulating the blueprints of life itself. We can biofortify staple crops to be more nutritious, saving millions of lives. We can improve quality and quantity faster than traditional selective breeding can, feeding billions. And we can even save species from endangerment and extinction by manually changing their genome. These amazing benefits lie just beyond our reach, not because of the limitations of science, but because we as a society are paralyzed by fear. Why are we terrified of GMOs? And should we be? Allow me to explain. The World Health Organization estimates that between 250,000 and 500,000 children go blind every year from vitamin A deficiency, and half of them die within a year of going blind. Obviously, we should help these kids. One way to do so is to distribute vitamin supplements. Beginning in the 1970s, researchers did this in several countries, either through vitamin capsules or by mixing vitamin A with the national supply of sugar, in the same way countries fortify salt with iodine. But these methods can't reach every child. Then, scientists got creative. What if they could somehow change the vitamin contents of plants themselves and distribute the seeds globally? In an effort to do this, one of the most well-known biofortified crops, golden rice, was developed. Golden rice gets its color from beta-carotene, the same way yams and orange carrots get their color. Scientists worked for decades to insert a gene found in daffodils, and later maize, into the genome of rice. And they succeeded. Vitamin A can now be successfully obtained by eating golden rice. Blindness epidemic over, right? No, because people are afraid of it. All over the world, the testing and deployment of golden rice has been delayed. In 2013, a test field of golden rice was destroyed by vandals. Ironically, the test field was planted in order to show that the cultivation of golden rice was safe, but the people destroyed the product designed to save them in order to feel safe. And this wasn't the first time. People have been vandalizing GMO tests since the very first ones began all the way back in 1987. These and many other vandalizations have cost researchers countless millions of dollars and years of their lives. So what's going on here? Why are people so afraid of a technology designed to help them? The first factor, and a big one, is that from an outside perspective, GMOs sound strange and unnatural. It doesn't take much help to weird people out with some of the transgenic combinations. When scientists inserted a gene from an arctic fish into a tomato, they found that the public displayed visceral negative opinions about such a combination. People inherently distrust things that seem unnatural. But it wasn't that unnatural. The transferred gene in question helped the fish, and in turn the tomato, survive in the cold by creating a sort of anti-freezing protein. The same protein, known as ice structuring protein, is found naturally in carrots and grains and is an added ingredient in many types of Unilever brand ice cream, which according to their website, helps keep the ice cream from melting. So this protein isn't as scary as it sounds. We eat it anyway. But the transgenic tomato never made it to market. People were highly suspicious of it, partly because of the way the media depicted it. The change was at the level of the DNA, of course, but grossly inaccurate images of fish-tomato hybrids were heavily circulated by the media as an attention grabber, misinforming the public and further provoking negative gut responses to the idea. It was dubbed the fish-tomato by the unappreciative public, and the tomatoes were discontinued. Such is the power of the public opinion. The media did this not necessarily to take a stance on the science of GMOs, but because outrage sells. Remember the crops vandalized back in 1987? Part of the reason that happened was that the media published photos of people in hazmat suits walking through the potato field, alarming the public. The photos implied that the GMO test field posed some kind of danger, creating negative publicity. And websites are especially skilled in exploiting fear for attention. Googling GMOs will take you to several websites that specialize in utilizing scare tactics. A popular anti-GMO website, the Non-GMO Shopping Guide, demonstrates this in the language they use when describing the scientific methods for genetic engineering. Notice the use of the words infect, gun, needle, shocks, and forcing, italics added. They are technically correct. Those are crude descriptions of methods used by the scientific community. But look at how easily they made it seem like these procedures are scary and dangerous abominations. And this is a problem because of the confirmation bias, which is a type of cognitive fallacy or a mental mistake observed commonly across people. The confirmation bias states that once a person has formed an opinion, i.e. fish tomatoes are weird, we seek out evidence to confirm that belief and rarely give ourselves the opportunity to have our opinion swayed the other way. 
Speaking of opinions, people also mistrust GMOs because of their affiliations with companies like Monsanto. Monsanto has become almost a dirty word and is widely considered to be an evil corporation. They, along with other large companies, were previously affiliated with horrifying chemicals such as DDT and Agent Orange. Yeah, these companies have bad reputations, so it isn't ideal that they're the ones handling the R&D of controversial products like GMOs. But they are the ones with the money to do so. GMO research is insanely expensive, and companies need to be able to recoup their costs. Are the companies behind some of these crops trying to make a profit? Yes, of course, that's what businesses do. But they're no more evil than companies that make and sell printer cartridges and bottled water. That's not a problem with GMOs, that's a problem with capitalism, which is a different issue. But still, this association is enough for some people to doubt the safety of GMOs, claiming that scientists are in the pocket of corporations. But some GMOs have nothing to do with profit, like our old friend, Golden Rice. One reason protesters gave for hating the crop is that they were afraid that it would raise the price of rice. But the patent holders of Golden Rice made their licenses without royalties, keeping the price the same and allowing for non-profit development. This is, or was supposed to be, a humanitarian aid project. And so, because of our inherent distrust of new science, our attention-seeking mass media portrayal, our confirmation bias, and the distasteful commercialization of the process, people are afraid of GMOs. But should they be? Well, science takes time. If you had asked 15 years ago if GMOs were safe, the best answer would have been, probably, but we need a few more tests. But now the science is in, and the overwhelming majority of data is really boring, actually. GMO food is no more dangerous than food, because that's what it is. My favorite meta-analysis looked at over 100 studies and found nothing dangerous. Instead, it was found that genetic modification has less impact on plant gene expression and composition than that of conventional plant breeding. For example, remember how golden rice has added beta carotene like that found in orange carrots? I specified orange for a reason. Carrots are naturally purple and yellow in color, and it was only through random mutation and forcible selective breeding that orange carrots came into existence at all. We've biofortified carrots in much the same way we've biofortified rice, but back then we didn't have a precise method. And in terms of unpredicted genetic drift, Golden rice is safer than orange carrots. But that isn't interesting enough for the public to pay attention to, that GMOs are safe to create and consume. Instead, it's easier to grab attention with phrases like these. After GMOs were introduced in 1996, autism, reproductive disorders, digestive problems, and others are on the rise. Potential immunological time bomb. Force feeding the world, America's GM or death ultimatum. Truth. Studies show that GM foods can be toxic or allergenic. GMOs could literally destroy the planet. And the misinformation is working, at least in certain areas. The general attitude towards GMOs is very negative in Europe, especially in France and Germany, to the point where the European Union has been fighting over GMO legislation for decades. In the United States, McDonald's recently rejected an offer to switch to a GM potato for its french fries, most likely on the grounds that their customers would object. This GM potato has less acrylamide in it, which allegedly creates carcinogenic compounds when fried. So, in the fast food capital of the world, people prefer a potentially cancer-causing potato over a safer one because we fear GMOs. In Hawaii, papayas, an important export crop, were on the brink of extinction. They were only brought back through the use of genetic modification. However, these new papayas, while superior in disease resistance, are being rejected from many markets, purely out of GMO fear. This has been costly for Hawaii's economy and detrimental to the families that farm them. And in possibly the most heartbreaking example, in 2002, Zambia rejected several thousand tons of food aid sent from the United States on the grounds that it might be genetically modified. The fear was great enough that people starved rather than eat what would later turn out to be harmless food. When another famine strikes the world, we need to be ready to listen to science, not protesters. There's a difference between choosing to eat organic and choosing to ban the research and distribution of potentially life-saving technology. This isn't the end of the story, only the middle. New technology is hard to trust at first, but it wins out in the end. The truth of the matter is that food production is going to be a real problem for the world as our population keeps exploding. Crops that can resist pests, disease, and the cold will make a major difference. We cannot let our misplaced fear hold us back from exploring the science of GMOs. 
Genetically modified food, properly explored and regulated, should be an exciting future. And we don't want to ban the future. The future is cool. If you'd like to know more about genetic modification, what it is and what it isn't, my friend Soliloquy has tackled that issue over on his channel. Click on the screen or on the link in the description to jump to that video. A few bacteria can simply uptake naked DNA through their pili and integrate it into their genome. Alternatively, holes can be created in the cell membrane using electric shocks, high intensity ultrasound, or heat and salt combinations that allow the new DNA to simply float on in. Or tiny gold particles coated in DNA can literally be shot into cells.